I'm interested in this answer because uh, I've heard a lot of different responses from different uh, analysts, but we have the guru here who knows all. What is the better mortgage option for potential buyers, a 15-year or 30-year option? Let me start by saying this, King. I like fixed-rate mortgages because I like certainty. Whether it's for 15 years or 30 years, I want to know how much that monthly payment is going to be. So when you talk about which one is really better, that comes down to what is the best fit for you. So let's break this down. With a 15-year mortgage, you're going to have a lower interest rate. And it also means you're going to pay off that mortgage in half the amount of time. And the cost to pay that mortgage out over 15 years as opposed to 30 years, it's about a third of the cost. So when you look at this uh, on a long-term basis, a 15-year mortgage is really a a great tool. But on a 15-year mortgage, your monthly mortgage is going to be higher. So there's a long-term benefit, but there's short-term pressure on you in order to be able to afford those payments. If you can't afford them comfortably, then that 15-year mortgage is very attractive. On the other side, when we're looking at a 30-year mortgage, you're going to have a higher interest rate. And over time, in terms of if you take the full 30 years to pay off the mortgage, the cost is going to be significantly more. However, generally, there is no prepayment penalty if you want to accelerate your payments. So you do have the option for flexibility. So you take a 30-year mortgage because you know you can make those monthly payments. But if you find yourself in a situation where you have some extra cash, you could certainly use that to pay down your mortgage as you go. The final point here is is that on the 30-year mortgage, it does allow you to save for retirement or make other adjustments uh, in lifestyle and so on to be able to enjoy your life as you go. So that relief in the monthly payment may be really important to certain people. So it really comes down to what is the best fit for you, your lifestyle, and long-term financial planning. And uh, staying on the topic uh, topic of mortgages, I've heard a lot about reverse mortgages. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how exactly they work. Can you please explain to our listeners uh, what is a reverse mortgage and how it works? Sure. A uh, reverse mortgage converts equity in your home to cash. Now, we've heard that before because... That's how you can go out and take a uh, you know a, ref- a refinance your mortgage, right? But this particular product is designed for seniors. This is for people who are 62 or older, and that's what you need to be in order to qualify. So, as I mentioned, how it works is is unlike your traditional mortgage where you make monthly payments to the bank and build equity. The reverse mortgage is is the bank actually pays you, and you don't have to make any repayments as long as you live in that home. Now, sounds too good to be true, of course, and you have to look at, well, when do you pay the piper? Well, the loan becomes due upon death or when the, whole, when the home would be sold. So you can live there, you get your payments, you're giving up equity, And those monthly payments that you receive are based upon the value of the home, the age of the borrower, and interest rates. So this is a strategy, obviously, again, if you're a senior and you have the intention of staying in your house on the long-term basis. If you're going to get out of there more quickly, it probably isn't the best example. Now, as far as repayment, let's just use the uh, example of death. So at the point in time when the owner of the home dies, let's just say that the house sells for $125,000 and you have a reverse mortgage balance on that home of $150,000, so there's a shortage of $25,000, the estate does not have to make up that $25,000. On the other side of this, let's just say that there's a $150,000 reverse mortgage balance and the home sells for 200000 then that $50,000 profit does belong to the estate. So this is one of those situations where if it's the right fit for you and what your intentions are as far as your long-term financial planning, it is definitely worth considering. Many people use it. 
Great job. The finance guru, Dan Geltrude, every Saturday morning with us. Uh, Dan, have a great uh, week ahead, uh, and we'll talk to you next Saturday morning. Thanks a lot for all of the great information. Thank you, Ken.